Welcome everybody to this new session of uh, the Olga Wojciechowski Centennial Conference. Uh, I am very, very glad to present the next speaker, Dian Pawagacev, who is a professor at uh, the University of Bari in Italy, and who will speak today on quasi-linear elliptic equations with MORI data. Please, Dian, you have the field. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the organizers of uh, the conference for their kind invitation to deliver the lecture at the Olga Odysseyskaya Centennial Conference. Uh, the opportunity to present uh, our result, results here is a great honor, also because what I'm going to speak about is uh, strongly related to the famous result of Odysseyskaya and Duralcev about uh, Hyodor continuity of the weak solutions to general quasi-linear elliptic equations. Uh, my talk is an outgrowth of a joint paper with uh, Son Sik Byun and Phil Sushin, both from South Korea, uh, which paper is uh, by printed. So we are interested in uh, regularity issues regarding uh, which solutions to the Riclet problem for general divergence form uh, quasi-linear equations. The solutions we are uh, dealing with uh, belong to the solar space W1M with uh, zero boundary trace, where the exponent M is not greater than the space dimension N. The underlying domain omega is bounded with uh, fairly non smooth boundary. And uh, the linear ingredients A and B are given in terms of Karatev degree functions. That, are, that is, uh, these are only measurable with respect to the independent variable X and not more than continuous with respect to U and its gradient. Uh, what uh, I will present here is uh, a tentative to get uh, global boundedness and further continuity result for these weak solutions, we can make the assumptions uh, on the behavior of these nonlinearities with respect to X. So we will control these terms in uh, the language of suitable more spaces. Classical prototypes of the equations considered are given by the M plus operator or AFX M Laplacian with strongly elliptic matrix A or MRA operator, and uh, many other regular Lagrange equations for variation of functionals. Uh, as a weak solution of the problem, we mean a uh, solar function taken in this space, which satisfies the standard integral identity for each test function taken in the same place. In particular, you can take the weak solution as a test function. Of course, in order to uh, give sense of the concept of weak solution, the nonlinear terms A and B must satisfy some minimal assumptions. And these are known as uh, controlled grout uh, conditions, which regard the grouts of the nonlinearities with respect to U and its gradient. And all these uh, grouts are sharp in some sense. Also, the conditions regard the behavior of this function with respect to x. So you have to take phi and psi in suite of all the back spaces with exponent bounded below with these uh, terms here. Uh, here, uh, m stays for the basic uh, exponent, and m star is the solar conjugate of m. So uh, we would like to study the optimal assumptions to impose on the function phi and psi and also on the boundary of the underlying domain in order to prove global boundedness and total continuity of each weak solution of the problem considered. So uh, as already said, we will take phi and psi in suitable more spaces. Let me recall the definition of more spaces. Given an exponent s greater than or equal one and another one theta between zero and 10, 
The only space with these two exponents is defined as the collection of all uh, S with back integral functions for which this norm here is finite. The limit cases of theta equals zero, theta equals n gives rise to uh, the Lebesgue space LS or L infinity. Uh, further on, uh, known embeddings between uh, Mori spaces say that the Mori space with exponent s prime theta prime is embedded into this space if and only if the exponent satisfy these inequalities here, uh, which are very easy to uh, interpret in geometrically. So let us consider, we will use this interpretation also later. Let us consider the Euclidean two, two plane with the uh, Lebesgue exponent taken on the horizontal axis and the Mori one on the vertical axis. So fixing a point S prime theta prime corresponding to this couple of exponents, this Mori space is embedded into each Mori space with exponents S second theta second which belong to this green trapezoid here. In particular, if you have a function belonging to a, a Lebesgue space with exponent s prime, this is embedded into all Mori spaces with exponent s second, theta second, which belong to the green triangle here. A bad future of the Mori spaces uh, is the fact that if the belonging of a function to a Mori space doesn't imply an improving of its integrability. So there is no any exponent that's greater than s prime such that you belong to the Lebesgue space with this exponent. And the third result here is the famous Mori lemma, which says that uh, for a solar function with gradient belonging to a Mori space with treatable exponent, you can uh, get, you can uh, claim Hilder continuity with uh, Hilder exponent given in terms of these exponents. Well, for what concerns the regularity of the underlying domain, we will suppose uh, uh, omega to be uh, uniformly empty. The uh, exterior of, your, of omega to be uniformly empty. It means uh, it is given by this condition here. And it means that the variation of M capacity of the part of the ball of radius R leading outside to omega must be bounded below by the variation of M capacity of the whole ball, which is comparable to this exponent of the radius. So roughly speaking, it means that uh, near each point of the boundary outside omega, there is enough room to put a small enough ball. Uh, some important properties of this notion, in particular, uh, each set which is p is also q fig for which q greater than or equal to p. And a very important property which will be used uh, later is the so-called self-improving property saying that uh, if a set uh, turns out to be p fig, then uh, there exists some q less than p, maybe very near to p, but anyway less than p, such that uh, uh, the set is also q thick. In our case, we assume M thickness of the uh, exterior, so we will have for three also M bar thickness for some M bar less than uh, M. For example, if you uh, change here in this definition, the variation of capacity with the N dimension of the back measure, this condition reduces to this one, which says that the Lebesgue measure of the part of the ball leading outside omega is bounded below by the Lebesgue measure of the full ball. And this condition is known in the literature as a condition of prodigious cantor algebra. Uh, this condition excludes exterior cusps, cusps at the boundary of the omega. And it is not hard to prove that a condition implies p thickness for each p greater than one. So in some sense, the uh, m thickness condition is more general than the condition of prodigious candor algebra. Uh, for example, the known exterior cone property implies uh, a condition and automatically also p thickness condition. 
and a large class of domains uh, which satisfy the condition are the so-called triangular clock domains, which roughly speaking are domains for which uh, the boundary of which is uh, uniform, it can be approximated by parallel hyperplanes at each point and at each scale. And this class of domains of domains is very usable if uh, you want to develop a Calderon Zygmunt regularity theory for uh, elliptic equation equations. Some uh, some known uh, fractal domains uh, uh, are right and plucked, so they satisfy the A condition and also the two thickness condition. And an alternative condition could be the so-called uniform exterior coarse group property, which implies the three-thickness condition, which is something like the uh, exterior cone property, but you have to imagine a coarse group instead of uh, exterior cone. Uh, in general, if a set satisfies the coarse group uh, condition, it is not uh, A, but it is if it for each P greater than one. So turning back to our problem, we uh, let me list the hypothesis. First of all, we suppose control grouts of the nonlinearity. So we suppose this uh, grounds with respect to the mm, unknown function u, the solution u, and uh, its gradient. And also, for what concerns the behavior of this nonlinearity with respect to x, we get uh, this control function phi and psi in a corresponding uh, Morris spaces, where the exponents p lambda for phi and q mu for psi satisfy these conditions here. Uh, there is a very simple geometric interpretation of these conditions. So let me show you a picture. Uh, I will discuss this case also later. So uh, for what concerns phi, we are taking it in LP lambda. And P lambda satisfies this inequality here. Uh, in the Euclidean two plane, uh, all couples, all admissible, admissible couples P lambda are these which, which are linked in this uh, blue zone of, uh, of the strip between zero and 10. So all that points which are on the right with respect to this uh, uh, brown oblique line, which corresponds exactly to the values of S and theta for which here we have equality. And more or less the same is interpretation also for what concerns conditions about Q and mu. Well, uh, apart from controlled graph uh, assumptions, we suppose also coercivity of the problem considered. So the vector field A times the gradient of the uh, solution is bounded below by the n power of the gradient plus lower order terms. And finally, we suppose uh, for what concerns the regularity of uh, the boundary, we suppose that the exterior of omega is uniformly amphic. Under these assumptions, we have two main results. The first one asserts global boundedness of each weak solution. So uh, there exists a constant M depending on the data of the problem and also on the M energy of the solution, which bounds the infinity norm of each weak solution of our problem. Moreover, the solution is not only essentially bounded, globally essentially bounded, but it is also uh, globally Helder continuous. So up to the boundary with Helder modulus of continuity and uh, exponent alpha depending on the data of the problem. Well, before saying some word about the proof of uh, these results, let me uh, list some historical notes about that problem. The simplest case is that of linear elliptic equations, which correspond to exponent m equals 2, and suppose the boundary uh, satisfies the Ladinian's Gorazzi condition. So the equation is linear. The weak solutions belong to W1, 2 with zero boundary trace. And this matrix here of the coefficients is bounded and strongly elliptic. 
The famous result of the Georgian Nish asserts global Hilda continuity of the weak solutions to this equation, assuming that phi belongs to LP with P greater than N and psi to LQ with Q greater than N over, half, over two. For what concerns the non-LP case, so cases when phi and psi are not belonging to uh, Lebesgue spaces, it was more the first to consider phi and psi belonging in these spaces which after his uh, paper uh, were named after him. Later, Levy and Stampake considered equations with measures, with particular measures, and uh, relatively recently, uh, Sasha Nazarov and Nino Ralceva uh, proved further continuity of the weak solutions to this equation via Harnack inequality stroke maximum principle where they took uh, the drift term in this Morris space. Uh, passing to the nonlinear case, let us suppose uh, that uh, the uh, nonlinear term satisfy so-called uh, subcontrol grounds. It means that uh, these terms behave with respect to u and the gradient as m minus one power. So in case m equals two, you have linear linear uh, droughts here. Uh, okay. And uh, local boundedness of the continuity results were proved by Serin in the LP case, taking phi in LP. Phi is always the function which controls A and psi is that which is controlling B. So phi belongs to LP with such P and psi and LQ with such Q. In the non-LP case, it was too difficult to consider a particular case with when M equals two. And taking, uh, you see here, he took phi and psi in these uh, more spaces where uh, the Lebesgue exponent is exactly on the borderline and respectively an N half. And he took some positive more exponent. Uh, later, Rakutusol and Zimmer uh, considered equations with measures taken here. And in a very deep paper by Lieberman, apart from uh, many other results, he got also uh, local holder continuity for equations with measures. And in the, in the last times, in the recent times, uh, various equations with measured data was considered. And some of the results regarding the local verdict continuity can be obtained via point by estimates proved by nonlinear potentials, as in the papers by Kip, Kilpelein, and Emily Trudinger, and Wang, Minjon, and collaborators, Chang, Kim and so on. So, the general case of elliptic equations with controlled grounds and boundary which satisfies the Lodigian square outside condition. These are the control and drought assumptions. And the famous result proved by Ladisian Scan Paralcima about global further continuity of the weak solution uh, asserts that further continuity under these assumptions on phi and psi. So phi taken in LP with P greater than N over N minus one and psi in LQ with Q greater than N over Q. And also here we can mention the non-LP result of Trudinger, which uh, fits also in this situation. Before passing to the proof, I would like to make a comparison between the result of Lodigian's Kernoralcio, which is a LP result, and our result, which regards uh, more regularity of the functions by psi. So uh, in the paper of Lodigian's Kernoralcio, uh, they suppose phi belongs to LP with P greater than N over M minus one. So considering this picture here, uh, the admissible range of P is this one. So P must be greater than this number here, N over M minus one. And this value is a uh, borderline case. You cannot take P equals to this one because you lost uh, boundaries of the solution. And of course, you cannot pass on the left with respect to this number. In our case, we get boundedness of the solution, assuming the exponents p and lambda to satisfy this inequality, which means 
the T and lambda uh, stay in the admissible range. And the admissible range is all this blue zone here. So uh, what uh, is easy to see is that you can take, for example, uh, no, uh, excuse me, okay. You can take a couple of exponents, which is here, for which the value of T is for sure less than this number, but the price you have to pay is to increase the value of lambda. So roughly speaking, you can decrease the value of the Lebesgue exponent uh, on account of increasing the value of the Mori exponent. And the same observation holds also for the other term psi, which is taken here. So uh, for what concerns sharpness of the controlled growth assumptions, it is a classical issue. And uh, it is easy to see by means of explicit examples that you cannot uh, uh, improve the grouts with respect to the gradient, with respect to you, both in the right hand side B, but also in the term A uh, of our equation. What is interesting is that also the Mori Lebesgue exponents are sharp. So uh, this is, these are the right conditions to be imposed on uh, Mori regularity of pi psi. And these conditions are sharp, are optimal. In the sense that if you if you try to avoid these assumptions, you can lose part of the solution. And we show this by means of an explicit example given by this function, which blows up at the origin. And uh, if you have if you perform a direct computation, computations, you will see that this function solves uh, equation for the M Laplacian operator with right hand side, which is the divergence of this function pi. This function phi here belongs to the Lebesgue space with exponent n over m minus 1. So exactly this borderline case. And this uh, Lebesgue space is included in each Mori space with exponents which are, which are linked on, the, uh, on, the, um, on this line here. But it doesn't belong to any more space with uh, admissible exponents. So this shows that if you try to arrive to the borderline case, you lose boundedness and of course also, uh, also Hilbert continuity. Um, the same function uh, shows also that uh, the assumptions on psi uh, also these are optimal. Uh, so what about the proofs? Uh, improving this result, uh, we follow the original approach of the uh, Georgi and Moser, as it was uh, adapted to the quasi-linear uh, situation by Ladisius Cantor Altsin. Of course, the presence of the Mori functions in our case needs some uh, particularities. So the first step is to get higher integrability of the gradient. This is, this is a relatively um, easy task using the assumptions on grouts and cursivity, also the uh, end thickness of the domain, thanks to a version of the Sobolev inequality near the boundary, which holds for domains with uh, fitting domains. Uh, so all this stuff lead to a sort of reverse Hilbert inequality for this expression f here, and uh, by means of uh, getting the quinta modica result, it asserts improving of the integrability of the gradient with respect to the uh, uh, exponent m and also of the solution with respect to the uh, Sobolev conjugate and stuff. And this is important in the procedure later. The second uh, step uh, consists in uh, proving decay estimates for the total mass of the solution over the super level sets. In case uh, the exponent m is less than the space dimension n, we consider this measure here, which apart from the characteristic function of the domain omega depends also on the Mori function phi psi and this uh, power of the solution. And it turns out that uh, 
the measure of the Bowie radius arm with respect to this uh, measure here is bounded above by this, uh, this power of rho, which is uh, the space dimension minus m plus something posit positive, which is very important. After that, uh, standard procedure is to be followed. So you truncate the solution, consider the super level sets omega k. And the goal is to prove that the measure of this super level sets vanishes identically when the level is large enough. And uh, in order to get that, we are using uh, in the situation of four spaces, we are using a sort of sovereign inequality which regards uh, positive Radon measures uh, M with this property, uh, which is known as sudden stress inequality. Really, um, a sort of this inequality uh, has been proved before by Mazia. Uh, anyway, this inequality says that for each uh, function V in the sovereign space W1R with zero boundary trace, the LS norm with respect to the measure M is bounded above by the R energy of the function, where the exponents R, S, and this alpha zero are uh, related by these conditions here. So, uh, computing the total mass and applying Hilder inequality first, and then this Adam's trace inequality. The total mass is bounded by a positive power of the measure of the super level set times the energy. The energy is estimated by means of uh, droughts and coercivity conditions by means of these three terms. And each of these three terms is uh, separately estimated uh, for its own. And this finally leads to such bound for the energy in terms, terms of the end power of the uh, of the level times the measure of the super level, super level set. After that, turning back, the total mass is bounded this way. Now, writing down the total mass as an integral from k to infinity by means of the Cavalieri principle, we arrive at this inequality here, where we have some function which, which is positive and turns out to be non-increasing. So this integral from k to infinity of this function is, bound, is bounded by the, mm, the maximum value of this function. So taken at k to the power one plus something positive times the value of k. And for such situation, the Hartmann-Stampaki maximum principle says that the function supports the finite time extinction property. So uh, it means that for large and low values of the variable, the function vanishes identically. And this is sufficient to get uh, what we need. That the measure of the super level set is zero for large and low value, values of k. Uh, of course, uh, this gives us a bound from above. Applying the same procedure to minus u, uh, gives a bound from below, and this gives the desired estimate in case m is, is less than n. When m coincides with n, some modifications must be done using the higher integrability, so the procedure is more, more or less the same. What concerns the second result, that of global Kelder continuity, the interior regularity all, already follows by a uh, result of Lieberman. So in order to get Kolder continuity up to the boundary, it is sufficient to estimate the oscillation of you on a ball taken with, uh, with radius R taken with center at the boundary by means of some positive power of the radius. And in order to get this, it is sufficient to estimate the, the essential supremum of the modulus of you. In order to get this estimate, uh, we follow more or less the Moser iteration te technique, uh, making use, of course, of the condition imposed and also of the Adam trace inequality, and also of a technical result, which is this lemma, which gives growth estimate for the gradient of the truncated solution. Uh, it is uh, quite uh, technical. So, uh, using all this stuff, we are able to get this estimate here, 
which says that, uh, so M is the essential supremum of the positive part of you taken in a ball with radius are intersected by omega. So uh, this function, this uh, experiment taken in a ball with radius uh, R -hal, R -hal, is bounded by means of the same quantity, but in the a larger ball with radius R, R plus this quantity A of R, which is given this way. And everything is multiplied by this constant, which turns out to be less than one. So uh, using the other interpolation inequality, for such kind of functions, you are able to estimate them in terms of positive power of rho, which gives us the desired result. And this uh, global theory continuity. Uh, only a note, uh, in case uh, the nonlinearity satisfies the so-called nature of graph condition, which means that the right-hand side essentially because as the m power of the gradient, assuming a priori that the solution is bounded, we are able to prove Kelvin continuity. So this result were already applied to in many situations to uh, obtain the Ron Zygmunt regularity theory in more spaces for. Uh, uh, elliptic equations and also to some particular case of systems and uh, that is all thank you very much for the attention ah, thank, you. thank you very much Dian. are there any questions please yeah, so we are open for questions uh, here is a question uh, Am I right that uh, your condition on phi and psi, psi are subcritical? Uh, so it means that in the linear case, in the case of linear equation, you uh, can just uh, rescale uh, your problem from, uh, this, uh, uh, from the ball of small radius to some unit ball, and you just get the uh, smallness of the corresponding norms of uh, rescaled functions by and psi. Yes? Mm, I didn't understand your question. So you are asking for linear equations, yeah? yeah for example, in the linear okay. case, uh, those conditions on, uh, uh, you can rescale your problem. You can uh, apply yeah. scaling and uh, rescale from small ball to the unit ball. Then in uh, this also, case, Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah, please. and in this case, uh, your conditions on phi and psi, which are not critical, they are subcritical. It means that uh, in, uh, after scaling, you get the problem with small coefficients. Yeah, but anyway, in the linear case, uh, the critical value, so m equals 2. Uh, so the critical values of P and Q are the same, respectively N and N half. So the picture I show, this one, uh, these pictures uh, apply also in the linear case. So even after rescaling, uh, you cannot improve the values of uh, P and lambda. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions, please? So, uh, thank you for the talk. May I ask the question, uh, do you know some uh, results on the further continuity of the gradient of solutions under certain assumptions yeah. on the functions? Yeah. yeah, of course, there are a lot of results, but, uh, but you have to, uh, so if you consider, for example, the general equation, uh, in order to have uh, uh, further continuity of the gradient, you have any way to, 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 to impose some restrictions on the behavior of the nonlinearities with respect to x. In our case, we have only measurability with respect to x. For example, if you look at the recent results by Minjohn, Chang, Kimazia, there are a lot of results of this kind, but in a better situation, to what concerns the behavior of the nonlinearities in x. With only measurability, I think more, more than uh, longer continuity of the solution cannot be expected. You cannot arrive even to uh, Lipschitz continuity of the solution. Yeah, right, right. I meant uh, under certain assumptions, uh, say on A and B 
yeah, maybe A doesn't depend on X at all, right? And yeah, if some... uh, A doesn't depend on X, yeah, 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 of course. Jamie, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there, would there be any other questions? Okay, probably time for just one. No, so I think let us uh, let us thank very much Diane for his nice talk, and uh, we'll move. To... Okay, uh, Professor Wei, you can uh, share your screen. Yeah. We'll yeah. Uh, to your chain. Okay. Uh...